This is Villa Gambaraya, high in the hills above Florence. Villa, gardens and countryside exist in perfect harmony. Ever since Eden, the garden has been a symbol of heaven on earth. Today, when we are more intimately concerned with our environment than ever before, gardens remind us of the beauty we are in danger of losing. Gardens were never just slices of nature. In the Renaissance, they became consciously designed works of art. No Renaissance garden was considered complete without water features. The Villa Lante, north of Rome, flowing down a steep hillside with an enchanting series of terraces and fountains is considered the perfect realization of a Renaissance garden. This is one of the oldest surviving roses known to man, the Rosa Gallica. In the 12th century before Christ, it was a religious symbol of the Persians and the fire-worshipping Medes. By the 5th century, it was cultivated by the Greeks and then imported by the Romans. Early Christian mystics saw the five wounds of Christ in its five petals. Romantic, strangely lovely nymph. Nymph was once considered a place of magic. Its lake inhabited by nymphs and benevolent gods. The river that flows through the town is said to be the tears shed by the young noblewoman Nympha, who mourned endlessly upon learning of her lover's death. What was once a neglected, wild thicket sprawled with greenery is now a bewitching, enchanted mass of tangled sweetness. Nympha, a romantic affirmation of the freedom of expression possible in a country garden. This is Sayoji, the moss temple in Kyoto. It was built by the Zen Buddhist priest, Musu Soseki, over seven centuries ago. An enchanted world of shades of green. In one of the first great programs of urban renewal, trees were imported from the countryside to line the streets and squares of Paris. Around the world, as cities grew and the space for gardens disappeared, the tree assumed a crucial role to help the urban dweller maintain a vital link with nature. Like no other flower, the orchid conjures up the mysterious exotic image of the tropics, because only here can it grow naturally. Even when raised at great expense in hot houses and cold climates, the orchid's fragile, wild, almost animal beauty still transports our imagination to the heat of these faraway lands. This is Holland. Small, flat, and so beautiful. I spent most of my childhood here. In February, when the cold mist rises, there's a promise of spring in the air and that delicious smell of the earth and things growing. I love the first tulips of spring. Planted in the chill of autumn, they rest and resist through long freezing winters, even under snow. In each age, beauty has a different interpretation. In 17th century France, it was thought that every garden should have a parterre, lawns and bosquets with interlacing walkways. Axial alignment, which draws the eye to the landscape, was emphasized by long, radiating allées of trees. The parterre de Baudrie, embroidered patterns, dramatizes the hand of man in nature. 
The vista gracefully continues along a large pool and a broad alley of grass with a mixed woodland bosquet on either side. The use of perspective in the landscape is dramatically exploited. The garden is typical of 17th century France. Man's mastery over nature sets the theme. Summer afternoon, summer afternoon. To Henry James, who loved nature and gardens, those were the two most beautiful words in the English language. In all the history of gardens and garden styles, the country garden is the most down to earth. Unlike grand formal gardens, the country garden is a cozy place for people and plants. Perhaps in no flower garden in the world is there a freer, more exhilarating use of colour than the one here in the French town of Giverny. Claude Monet, the father of Impressionism, created this garden with a painter's eye. More than anything, he said, I must have flowers, always, always. Framed by a series of curving arches, this garden was a living canvas, an experiment with light, colour and texture in which he painted with flowers and everywhere you feel their lively joyous presence. 